Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm going to attempt to piece together this optical illusion puzzle by Magnolia Puzzles. Uh, this one is a square puzzle, it's 1050 pieces and yeah, basically features this very trippy uh, design. So it's all this these rings and a circle in the middle um, and they're all made up of this sort of uh, kind of scalloped pattern actually, which looks very 70s. It's got sort of oranges and purples, very like con contrasting and very trippy and bonkers. Um, and yes, if you look at it too closely, it actually, the optical illusion is that the circles and rings move, but in like different directions from each other. So yeah, it's very trippy. And if you stare at it too long, kind of makes you feel a little bit ill. Um, so I'm not entirely sure why I'm going to be doing this puzzle. I'm starting to sort of question my life choices here because I always go on about how much I dislike challenge puzzles and that I don't enjoy doing them. Um, but there's just something in me that just can't quite resist. So, well, here we are. Um, but when I saw this one, I'd already done some Magnolia puzzles before. Um, I'll link to a video on one up the top. And I've actually really enjoyed the quality of them so far. So. Yeah, I figured why not give this one a go. Um, so in a sec, we are gonna uh, look at the packaging, unbox it, check out the pieces, and of course, attempt to put it together. So let's have a quick look at the packaging. So uh, like other Magnolia puzzles, it comes in this sort of like maroney brown kind of colored, uh, kind of skinny like rectangle box um, with a bit of like a very smooth kind of nice finish. And yeah, it's pretty sturdy, like, like a normal puzzle box, I guess, but fairly, feels fairly strong. Um, and then on the front, we've got here Magnolia Puzzles and they've got their little tagline, Life is a Puzzle, and then 1050 pieces. Um, and then we've got the artist's name uh, over here. Oh, we've also got the, I guess, whole image as well. But the artist is, probably gonna butcher this, uh, Yuri Peripadia. And then on this side, which the other Magnolia Puzzles have as well, it has difficulty level and ha, <laughs> This has five out of five stars. So the hardest difficulty, yay for me. And then it just says square down here as well. And then what have we got on the different sides? So this short side here, we've got some of the same info repeated. We've got Magnolia puzzles. We've got sort of a, I guess, section of the image. Then we actually have a little mini version of the whole image. And then it just says, it's got a number, 3005. So I guess that's like the product or the puzzle number. Uh, says so optical illusion, the artist's name, and it has the size, which is 60 by 60 centimeters, and then the number of pieces again. And I believe, yes, that's repeated on this side. Uh, yeah, all the same information there. And what else? Oh, this side's a little bit different. It says Magnolia Puzzles, has the pieces, the amount of pieces, and just the little like mini hole image there. And I think, Oh, and this one, again, slightly different. Has like the logo, the info about the name of the puzzle, the artist, um, the size of the puzzle, has a little whole image there, the number of pieces and a barcode. And then if we go to the back, got to spin it around this way, got a fair bit of information here. So we've got Magnolia Puzzles, their website and their sort of socials up here. And then we've got, you know, some examples of some other Magnolia Puzzles that are available. Um, and then we've got a little panel of info here in English and there's also one in Turkish because these are actually made in Turkey. So in English it just talks about um, that the box and cardboard material used in the puzzles is recyclable. Um, talks about, you know, missing part support, cautions, and then it talks about the difficulty level, explains how that works. Yeah, and repeated in Turkish. And then we've also got a little bit of, in this box here, both in Turkish and English, um, it talks about like how to glue your puzzle. So these actually usually come with like a little packet of like adhesive powder. So that's kind of cool if you want that option. And then yeah, just down the bottom, it's got a bit of like contact details and you know, recycle, recycle uh, logo and choking hazard and yeah, made in Turkey and that sort of thing. So let's open this up. Okay, and then the inside of the box is just white. And then around the edges, just plain, I believe. Yep. And then, okay, so I have seen some of these come in a like Ziploc bag and some come in like a non-resealable bag. And this one's 
come with the non-resealable bag, so I will need my scissors in a minute. Um, but that, I mean, I guess you could reseal it if you wanted, and, but I think you can probably put it in soft plastics recycling, which I guess is something at least. Um, so we'll open that up in a sec. And yeah, it comes with your little sachet of adhesive powder. And yeah, and then the inside's just blank. Um, so I probably won't be using this because I never glue my puzzles together, but uh, let's open up the pieces. So I've just poured the pieces out into the box and it has that lovely new puzzle smell. So that's good. Um, I did see a, a little bit of puzzle dust, which seems to just sort of go into the bottom of the box. From memory, these don't have too much, so that's good. Hopefully that won't bother me. Um, so let's look at these sort of piece shapes. Um, so yeah, uh, Magnolia puzzles tend to do like a grid style cut um, and have like kind of standard pieces. So we've got here one that's like a one tab piece. Um, we've got like a three tab. What else have we got? A classic sort of two tab piece as well. Um, oh, we've got here one that has like inverted, like zero tabs, I guess. Um, do we, what are we looking for? A different two piece one. Well, I mean a two tab one. Oh, here's a one with four tabs. And I'm guessing there somewhere in here, there is another one that has uh, two tabs as well. Okay, I'm not gonna spend all day digging for it, but it's probably in here. But yeah, pretty much all your uh, sort of standard traditional cut or grid cut shapes. So yeah, I think that's the same as all the other, other puzzles that I've done. Um, so let's check out one of the, like just a single piece um, okay, let's, this one, sure. So the back is a sort of lovely um, kind of bluey gray board, just yeah, plain cardboard, no paper backing, so that's nice. And the thickness is kind of like a, I guess like a medium thickness. Um, yeah, maybe like a thin to medium, but it's not super thin. Like it's definitely feels like, feels strong, sturdy. I mean, like most puzzle pieces, you can like probably, yeah, you could definitely bend it if you tried, but it's not soft definitely feels quite strong and on the top it's very smooth like there's no um, texture at all it's just completely smooth um, but it's actually quite matte like sure there's a teeny weeny bit of sheen with my extra lighting for filming um, but my experience with these puzzles so far has been uh, that they are quite matte even though they feel very smooth so yeah like quite a really nice uh, finish. So yeah, I'm excited to puzzle with these. Um, and I don't know how we're going to go with false fits on this. Um, with all the other Magnolia puzzles that I've tried, I don't think I've ever had any false fits or very few. But that being said, this is like, you know, the imagery here is very repetitive in certain sections. So uh, it could prove troublesome. We'll have to see. Um, Hopefully like their pieces are cut uh, like varied enough so that, you know, it's less likely to happen. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. And yeah, it's going to be kind of interesting putting this together. Um, I'm not, I mean, it says it's like really difficult, five star difficulty, but you know, there's certain parts of it that I feel might be not too hard. Like I kind of look at the center and um, because it's, it really stands out from the rest. So it will be quite easy to spot like those pieces. And then even the border, like some of the pattern gets sort of cut into. So you'd be able to spot that pretty easily. But then again, I guess this is like a reflection of this. So I don't know. Um, so in a sec though, I think I'm going to get started on this. Um, but maybe it might be fun to sort of, uh, you know, do a little bit of sorting and pull out some of the pieces and maybe even try and piece some together. Um, you know, while I'm chatting to you about it. Um, so I guess, yeah, let's get into some puzzling. Okay, so I've just poured the puzzle pieces into a couple of like sorting trays just so I can use the box lid. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is looking at it um, and also measuring the size because it's 60 by 60 centimeters, so it's a big square. I think uh, it might be easy, easiest to try and start from the center and sort of work my way out, at least for now. Plus I think uh, these pieces in the center will be like easier to spot. And I have actually spotted one. I've spotted uh, one here, which is I believe actually kind of next to the center. So we'll keep that out. Um, yeah, so let's try and let's move one of these aside. 
And let's do a bit of a rummage in here and see if we can find more of these sort of smaller patterned pieces, I guess. I feel like they're definitely more distinct. And something else I've noticed is, I don't know if you're able to see it here, but some of the pieces, or oh, actually I could point it out in here, um, at the edge of each sort of round of rings, I guess, uh, there's actually shading. So that makes it a bit easier to like, you know, tell where some pieces of the pattern go. So yeah, it's kind of gonna be interesting. Right, let's rummage. This, these looks pretty small. I don't know if they're the inside circle or if they're like the sort of medium rings. Oh, okay, that's definitely, okay, they might be medium, so we'll just push those aside. Ah, here we go. So I would have spotted a few more by now, but maybe there's just not that many. I'm not quite sure how big that sort of center circle is going to end up being. Why am I not finding more? Where are they? They're hiding somewhere. Okay, let me grab this tray. Maybe they're all in this tray. Oh, wait, here we go. That's something. I still think they might be medium rings, not the inner circle, but. I may have to end up uh, flipping all these over, which is what I tend to do with a lot of puzzles. I just sort of do a, a bit of an initial rummage and try and pull out, um, you know, edge pieces and things like that, which I may or may not do for this. I might just to separate them um, and leave them till later, but um, yeah, it might still be easier to flip all these over at some point. The question is, do any of these go together? No, I don't think so. Oh, maybe this. Oh, there we go. That one does, hooray. I mean, eventually, oh, there we go. Yeah, because the pattern goes like a certain direction, I guess, um, like the scallops kind of spiral, like come out from the center should be that should actually help putting this together because you'll know which like roughly which direction like pieces are going to go so but yes I think we need to find a few more before we can like fill in that center I feel like I'm gonna be rummaging all day at this rate maybe that's why the puzzles are I've got to rummage So does anyone else out there uh, do a lot of challenge puzzles or has anyone tried this one? I'd be interested to know, I guess, yeah, let me know in the comments, um, yeah, what your experience is with doing different challenge puzzles and, yeah, have you done many? Do you like them? Which ones have you done? Yeah, I'd be interested to know. I haven't done too many. Uh, I've done some Crips before and, you know, like the Ravensburger Glitter Challenge and, um, yeah, some things like that, but not actually too many. So we'll see how um, my patience goes trying to do this one. Ah, aha, the other part of the center. There we go. There we go. Huzzah, we've done the center. Woo, just now we have to do the rest of it. Um, nope, nope. Keep saying it should be easier to like um, you know, figure out where things go because of the pattern, but here I am jamming in pieces the wrong direction. So, heh, oh there. It seems like all these like um, pieces with the tiny patterns on it are all like hiding upside down in the bottom of the trays, annoyingly. Okay, 
don't know if that's a you part of this. Oh yeah, you are. Okay. All right. All right. Hey. Okay. Well, at least once you find the uh, right size pattern pieces, um, it's not too bad. At least initially putting this together, I'm sure it will get more difficult as like the pattern gets bigger, perhaps, because there'll be like more area to cover. Um, well, so we're not here all day rummaging. Uh, well, for you, I will be. Uh, um, yeah, I think we might, or I might as well say goodbye for now and get into putting this together. Um, I am planning on sort of stopping, I guess, sort of roughly halfway through or partway through and just to chat to you about how it's going and, you know, what I think of the experience and quality and all that. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll see you in a bit and uh, let's get into some puzzling. I'm back and this puzzle is definitely looking very trippy and cool. Um, if you stare at it too long, it definitely does have a bit of a moving effect. It's yeah, trippy is definitely the right word for this puzzle. Um, yeah, it's been really fun so far and definitely difficult, I have to say. Um, believe it or not, to get to this point, which I think is maybe halfway or a bit less, it's essentially just gotten the middle circle done and a little bit of the next couple of rings. Um, yeah, to get to that point, um, has taken me, believe it or not, three hours and 50 minutes. I don't know how I took four hours just to do this. It seems like bonkers that I don't know what I was doing. Um, but yeah, like it just took so long to get to this point. I think the main reason is that although once it's together, the pattern looks simple enough, when you're actually looking at individual pieces that just have bits and pieces of the pattern, it's really tricky to tell like where it belongs, except for like, you know, there's a certain amount of this inner circle that's pretty easy because it's so easy to identify uh, with the tiny little bits of pattern. But as you get sort of to this sort of area, it gets more tricky. Um, and, you know, as you can see, there's just so many pieces that have little slithers of like the white and the purple and the oranges. So it just gets so hard trying to like, you know, I'd be able to identify the correct little bit for your the circle or rings that you're working on. 
so yeah I think that was part of what took so long is probably just yeah sorting and just trying to figure it out and then when you find it you then have to figure out where on the circle it goes so yeah it's definitely a lot of trial and error um, and it's quite time consuming but that being said like it's still doable and quite satisfying to put this together like I really enjoyed seeing it sort of like kind of grow and yeah, really come together it was just yeah something very satisfying about that and quite fun um, yeah I guess the slow part is sort of yeah trying to find the pieces and just trying them in different spots and that sort of thing um, but yeah you know I feel pretty good being able to get this far so yeah so let's talk about the piece quality um, yeah I'm really happy with it so far I've been really enjoying the experience um, as a whole um, I've done some magnolia puzzles before and I've really quite enjoyed them and the quality and yeah this one's no exception so the pieces have a lovely smooth finish and are quite matte um, they feel like they shouldn't be matte they feel like it's too smooth to be matte it's quite quite weird um, but yeah really helpful that it's matte especially when you are like staring at this for so long and also trying to like find little details it's definitely helpful to have no glare so this has been excellent and yeah the pieces fit really nicely together although in this puzzle I have noticed I feel like some of the piece fit is like a little bit looser maybe than some of the other magnolias I've done um, it's not every piece it's just some pieces like I noticed there were a couple in the middle here that felt a bit loose but that being said you can still sort of yeah you can still pick up sections and probably do a puzzle pickup maybe we'll even try one later we'll see how that goes um, but yeah so overall like it's still a very nice piece fit it's not like wobbly loose or anything like that um, and then what else uh, yeah dust there's a tiny bit and there's a little bit in the box um, yeah I can see a little bit on the board but it's really quite minor so nothing really too bothersome there and the quality of the pieces has been excellent I haven't found any damaged pieces at all which is also fantastic um, yeah really is a nice feeling seeing like such a sort of I guess symmetrical kind of image look so perfect like I, I really like that that we don't have to worry about any any bent pieces or anything like that so yeah I think it's looking really good um I don't think there's too much else to add except um you know I don't know how long the next puzzling session is going to take I think possibly at least four or even more hours just because I feel like there's still a lot to do like <laughs> like I started on the next couple of rings but I didn't get very far and it was taking I was getting kind of tired and it was taking me a while and I've still got all this area on the outside to do um, maybe some of it will be easier because it's like the border but I don't know so I'm not quite sure what to expect hope it doesn't take me too too long um, but I yeah I'm not expecting it to be super easy either um, yeah so I guess you know <laughs> wish me luck as I work my way through all this orange and white and purple and black and I guess I'll see you once I finish the puzzle.
So it's me again, uh, I'm back and as you can tell I have not yet finished this puzzle and that's because the last session just took, was taking so long that I just needed to stop and take a break. Um, so yeah, I really have grossly underestimated how difficult and time consuming this puzzle is. Um, I'm going to officially change the star rating, the difficulty star rating from 5 out of 5 stars to 10 out of 5 stars. I think that's certainly justified. This is absolutely a challenge puzzle, that's for sure. Um, so just to blow your mind a bit, the last session, which was like these two rings and like some of this outside stuff, um, it took, brace yourself, 5 hours and 40 minutes. Like, that's just crazy to me. I can't believe, like, looking at it, it's like, looks like I've done nothing at all. <laughs> but like, it just took so long. A lot of it was just, you know, sorting and also just, you know, the piece, pieces are just so hard to figure out where they go. So even though the pattern, like, you know, the scallops look fairly like straightforward, um, you know, when it comes to both like the edge here, you know, it's actually very abstract. Like it's really hard to imagine, okay, what pieces will come like with color and shape are going to come next. And even when you look at pieces, they're very abstract. Like it's hard to tell, you know, where exactly that would go. And you need to factor in too that, okay, so all the scallops, yes, they're all facing this direction, um, but the colors actually change. So in this middle section, you know, we've got like, what? there's a couple of purples, black, orange, kind of yellow, white, and then it switches here. So we've got white, yellow, orange, black, and the purples. And then this outer bit switches again back to like this colored uh, color order. Um, so, you know, obviously in the middle, it's easier, at least in here, because it's very small, very identifiable pieces. So, and less area to cover. So that was definitely the easiest bit. I thought when I started, that, I was like, this isn't that hard. But then even when you get out to here, like even this shaded bit, you think the shading would help you, but then you're like, is it the shading here or is it here? Like, it's so hard to tell when you're just looking at, you know, individual pieces. Um, and then of course these rings are really can be hard to tell apart from even these, even though they, they change in size, like these are bigger. Like I said, when you're looking at individual pieces, it's quite hard to tell. Um, so yeah, I've definitely been like sorting and resorting. And as I've gotten used to like, you know, if I look at a piece over here, like I've gotten more used to now going, okay, what's the color order? Yellow, uh, white, purple. So, We've got, can't be here, it has to be, okay, well, it's probably not the middle because of the size of it, but we've got, okay, yellow, white, purple. So it's somewhere in this like outside section. But, you know, as I've gotten used to doing that with pieces, you know, I've like sorted them into like which section they go to and that sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, this last session, as I started on this outside bit, because there were a lot less pieces to contend with, I, I mean, there's still a lot, let's, let's be real, but I decided to actually try and sort it a bit more. So I've actually decided, let's try and put all the pieces that have white on them together. I mean, they have other colors too, but we've got here, like put a tray here that has pieces that all have white. And then on this tray, you can see like, I've got some with white and then some that don't have white. And then we've still got whew, another like, tray this one doesn't have any white and yeah same with this and then i've got my border where is it there my border pieces over in that little tray which i think we'll just save till last because you know um yeah so i've really had to sort these i mean i might even sort these further and you know put all the oranges or just the purples together i'm not sure but at least now i've got a lot less pieces to contend with so it's a bit easier to spot them just having them in these few trays um but yeah it's been very time consuming because, you know, some of the pieces have a lot of color and detail on it and are very abstract looking. So, you know, you have to study each piece and be like, which pile for which section does it go in and that sort of thing. So yeah, just really, yeah, a lot of, you know, it's just really time consuming. And then of course, when you do figure out, okay, it's a piece for this middle section or this outside section, you're like, but where, which white piece is it? You know, you have so many, to choose from um so yeah even like sorting out these white pieces it's been really hard to figure out where around the circle they go so yes very tricky 
quite <laughs> and difficult and time consuming. But all that being said though, I'm still actually really enjoying this. Um, you know, it has its frustrating moments, especially when, you know, you take ages to place a piece, but sometimes you get on a bit of a roll and you get a whole chunk done and it's really satisfying. But yeah, it's especially um, fun just seeing it all like come together. I love the sort of 3D look of it and, and just to like how, you know, woo, trippy it looks. Let's not stare at that too long. Um, yeah, actually one thing I'd like to add is I thought maybe doing, doing this puzzle I'd feel sick because like if you stare at the center it kind of spins but actually when you're like focused on stuff you don't really see that too much so I didn't actually have any issues with feeling queasy or sick so that is good because I was a bit worried. Um, anyway I think I have done enough chatting I'm just avoiding looking at the middle too much so we don't feel sick. Um, so I think it's time to try and finish, finally finish this puzzle. So fingers crossed and let's get puzzling. I finished the puzzle well sort of I'm missing a piece <laughs> so after all that time and effort spent putting this puzzle together 
uh, I'm missing an edge piece and I guess technically I can't finish the puzzle. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, I have searched sort of high and low, searched under the cat, searched under the table, looked in the bag that the pieces came in, but yeah, I can't find the piece anywhere. So I think I might actually have to take up the Magnolia offer on the back that actually says uh, missing parts support. It says determine the coordinates and you fill in a form on their website and supposedly they'll mail you the missing piece. So let's hope they actually send out missing pieces to Australia. So yeah, I guess I can update you uh, in the comments or description later as to if I've had any success with that or not. Um, well, I guess we'll see. Um, but apart from that, I really do think the puzzle has turned out really cool and fun and funky. It's yeah, it's completely different to anything I've done before. It was definitely time consuming and challenging, which I'll get to in a sec. But yeah, I really love how it looks. It's super cool. Um, I love this sort of 3D effect of the, like the different rings. And yeah, and I love that it actually does sort of move if you stare at it. But if you look too long, it can make you feel a little bit queasy. So yeah, but yeah, a lot of fun, um, even though it took forever, speaking of which. So end up, I ended up spending three long sessions putting this together, um, a lot longer than I thought this puzzle would take. I really like, you know, underestimated the difficulty of this one. So the last session uh, to sort of finish this outer part took four hours and 40 minutes. So still a really long session. And all up, all three sessions, including all the hours spent sorting and resorting and trying to figure out where pieces go, um, brace yourself, it took 14 hours and 10 minutes or thereabouts. So I think that's the longest I've spent on a puzzle in a really long time. Um, yeah, de yeah, definitely quite mind blowing. I just, I knew this would be tricky, but I just really didn't think it would be that challenging. So yes, definitely, absolutely meets the requirement of a challenge puzzle, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, in terms of like, um, I guess the overall experience, like uh, with the pieces and everything, yeah, really love the quality. Uh, like I said, I've done some of these puzzles before and I've really enjoyed them. And yeah, I love the piece fit in this. Uh, everything fits nicely. I didn't have a single false fit actually. So that's worth mentioning. That's really good when it comes to something that has a lot of you know, similar colors and shapes everywhere. So yeah, not a single false fit. So that's very impressive. Uh, not too much dust, uh, no glare at all. So again, very happy with that and lovely smooth finish. And, and yeah, the pieces hold together quite well. Um, not that I really worked on sections and moved them. I kind of was just kept building around, but um, I did, you probably saw in like some of the time lapses that I did actually spin the puzzle around on the board. So it was still important that it stay together while I did that uh, because, you know, when it gets to this size, I can't really reach the other side. So I had no choice but to sort of spin it. So yeah, it definitely helped when it came to that. And yeah, no damaged pieces. Yeah, the only, I guess, con is that uh, my missing piece. So, you know, but these things happen, but it is kind of a frustrating puzzle for it to happen on. So yeah, um, so I guess, uh, the real question here is, would I recommend this puzzle? And I would say yes, even though it's really difficult and really challenging. And I keep going on about how I, I don't like challenge puzzles. Well, I think part of me does because I, there's always something inside me that really wants to sort of still have a go at these. Um, yeah, I think I would definitely recommend this, but, uh, you know, really only if you're someone who loves a really like challenging, puzzle and you don't mind putting aside the time, uh, you know, to work on it. Like I did this over like, I guess, three sessions, but you know, you could obviously might be better to do this over like, you know, a couple of weeks or something, like have it as a puzzle that you, you know, just spend an hour here and there on and add to it instead of like, you know, really like binging it, I guess. Um, but you know, you do you, whatever works for you, I guess, but yeah. So if you love like crit puzzles um, or other just really challenging puzzles, you'd probably love this. Um, I don't know if I'd really recommend it for beginner puzzlers. I think it's pretty intense. I mean, you know, again, I'm not gonna stop anyone from doing anything. You should do whatever puzzles make you happy. Um, but I think imagining back when I was a beginner puzzler, I think this would have been very overwhelming. Um, 
So yeah, I think maybe it's better for maybe intermediate to advanced puzzlers, but you know, again, you know, it's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having a go at this. Um, I was also thinking it could actually be quite fun to, and quicker to do this with like other people. So, you know, with a friend or family member, it could be fun, especially because it's, you know, a circle and then a square, you could easily work on like opposite sides or something like that. And, you know, that might help it go a bit quicker. Um, but yeah, so I guess those are my thoughts on it. And um, yeah, I think overall it's a fantastic challenge puzzle. Um, you know, it's really difficult, but it's also incredibly satisfying and also kind of leaves you this cool, fun optical illusion. So in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this optical illusion challenge puzzle. Do you think you'd ever give this one a go? And let me know, do you like challenge puzzles? What ones have you done, if you've done some, and are there any that you want to do? If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. You can also find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.